Hello beautiful friends, my name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to Rescues and Reads. It's time to talk to you about all of the books I would like to read for the Slayer Fest 2023 readathon. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and go through all of the books that I have tentatively planned out to read for Slayer Fest 2023. So while I feel like a lot of this is kind of set in stone, I do feel like there's still a lot of room for flexibility depending on what comes up. And I will admit that some of these prompts don't even have any books selected. Like some of them I'm having a hard time finding books for, or books that I want to read, because this is what I'm trying to accomplish when I'm selecting books for this readathon. One, I want the books to be books that are already on my TBR. So these are books that are already on my radar. These are books that I already want to read and I'm able to fit them into this readathon. But also I'm trying to pull double duty in a lot of ways because I'm trying to use the Slayer Fest prompts to also satisfy some of the challenges that I'm doing throughout the year. So I've set some personal challenges for myself throughout the year, like 23 books I want to read in 2023, authors that I want to read in 23. And then there are some other reading challenges that you might have heard of, like the 52 Books Club is doing a readathon or Around the Year in 52 Books, I believe is the name of one of the challenges. So there are a lot of separate reading challenges that I'm doing. And so some of those prompts align very nicely with some of the prompts that I put into this readathon. So I'm really trying to carefully curate my Slayer Fest TBR to make sure that the books that I'm reading are either going to satisfy some of these challenges or are books that I already want to read or own, etc. But like I said, some of these prompts don't yet have a book attached because I'm having trouble finding options for them that are already like on my TBR or will satisfy some of these challenges. So if I get to a prompt that doesn't really have a book, I'm completely open to your suggestions if you want to leave me some options down below so I can take a look and hopefully find something to satisfy these prompts. So without Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into what I plan on reading and for which prompts. Okay, so for Buffy to read a book with a badass female protagonist, I believe that I'm going to go ahead and do Cress by Marissa Meyer. Cress and Winter are the last two books in the Lunar Chronicles, and I have a goal to finish that series by the end of this year because I have been in progress with that series for a very long time. If you're not familiar, the Lunar Chronicles are YA sci-fi retellings. So Cinder was a Cinderella retelling, Scarlet was a Little Red Riding Hood retelling, Cress I believe is a Rapunzel retelling, and then Winter it should be a Snow White retelling. And they're all science fiction, so they're all set in the future. Cinder herself is like a robot and things like that. And I just found myself really captivated with Cinder. It was a book that I never ever wanted to read before. And then suddenly I picked it up and I fell in love. But as time has gone on, I've kind of lost interest in the series, especially as I've been moving away from YA. And I want to make sure that I'm able to finish Cress and Winter before I lose interest entirely and do not even want to pick it up. And I find myself really in the mood to continue at this point because I just read Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. And so since Buffy is like literally the very first prompt I have to satisfy, for the buy-in for this readathon, I figure it would be a perfect time to go ahead and read Cress. And so there are definitely going to be a lot of badass females in this because we're going to have Cinder, we have Scarlet, and now we are going to have Cress. So I'm pretty sure that is what I'm going to satisfy for that. For Willow, the witchy read, I'm going to read Spells for Forgetting by Adrienne Young. This actually works out really perfectly because this was something I had already planned on reading in April for a book club. This is definitely giving me Shea Earnshaw vibes just in terms of how atmospheric I think it's going to be. It follows Emery Blackwood, whose life was changed forever the night her best friend was found dead and the love of her life, August Salt, was accused of murdering her. Years later, she is doing what her teenage self swore she would never do, living a quiet existence on the misty remote shores of Sorsha Island and running the family's business. But when the island, rooted in folklore and magic, begins to show signs of strange happenings, Emery knows that something is coming. The morning she wakes to find that every single tree on Sorsha has turned color in a single night, August returns for the first time in 14 years and unearths the past that the town has tried desperately to forget. So I'm definitely loving the atmospheric witchy vibes of this story. It definitely sounds like there's going to be a mystery to solve in here and possibly maybe even a second chance romance. I'm not sure, but I am here for it. And this will absolutely satisfy the prompt of Willow reading a witchy read. For Xander, I'm going to go ahead and read a book by one of my go-to authors. And I think for this, I'm going to be reading Fly Away by Kristen Hanna. Kristen Hanna is one of my favorite authors of all time. I pretty much love absolutely everything I pick up by her. Fly Away is one of her older novels and it is the sequel to Firefly Lane. Firefly Lane at its core is basically a story of friendship. It follows the main characters, Tully and Kate, over three decades as their friendship progresses. And it actually has been adapted by Netflix. Now, did Fly Away need to exist as a sequel? No, because really there's no cliffhanger or anything like that at the end of Firefly Lane. It's just a very sad, tragic kind of ending. But I think you're going to be able to follow a lot of these characters in the aftermath of what happened in Firefly Lane. And so that's kind of why I'm looking forward to it. And again, this is another one of the 23 and 23 that I want to read. It's Kristen Hanna is a go-to author. I think I will definitely be using that for Slayer Fest. Next, we have Giles, which is to read a historical or a nonfiction author. And I'm still a little bit up in the air about this 
this because there are a lot of options, but currently what I'm leaning towards is Secrets of a Charmed Life by Susan Meisner, which is a historical fiction. Susan Meisner is quickly becoming one of my favorite historical fiction authors, and I actually already have this down to satisfy one of the buzzword reading challenge prompts, and so I figured it could satisfy that as well as a Slayer Fest prompt. So this is what I'm leaning towards right now. I don't know what this is about. It says, present day Oxford, England, young American scholar Kendra Van Zandt, eager to pursue her vision of a perfect life, interviews Isabel McFarland just when the elderly woman is ready to give up secrets about the war she has kept for decades, beginning with who she really is. What Kendra receives from Isabel is both a gift and a burden, one that will test her convictions and her heart. So we also have a separate timeline in 1940s England, so the height of World War II. As Hitler wages an unprecedented war against London's civilian population, hundreds of thousands of children are evacuated to foster homes in the rural countryside. But even as 15-year-old Emmy Downtree and her younger sister Julia find refuge in a charming Cotswold college, Emmy's burning ambition to return to the city and apprentice with a fashion designer pits her against Julia's profound need for her sister's presence. Acting at cross purposes just as the Luftwaffe rains down its terrible destruction, the sisters are cruelly separated and their lives are transformed. So I'm here for it. Like I said, Susan Meisner is now quickly becoming one of my favorite historical fiction authors. I already have this on my shelves and it would also be good to get one of the physical TBR books read. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Then for Cordelia to read a beautiful book, I'm going to go ahead and read Kingdom of the Cursed by Carrie Maniscalco because I have this beautiful fairy loot edition. And if you have recently watched my April TBR, you know that one of the prompts I landed on during my TBR game was to read a beautiful book. And that's what I selected for this. So that actually overlaps perfectly. So I'm going to go ahead and get this out of the way. Again, this is part of like the 23 and 23 challenge that I'm doing. I would like to also read Kingdom of the Feared, which would be the third and final book in the trilogy. And I could go ahead and wipe another series off my plate, but I definitely plan on getting to this this year during Slayer Fest. If you're not familiar, this is a YA fantasy that follows our main character, Amelia, and she is a witch basically living among humans. And one day she finds her twin sister brutally killed and she is out for vengeance, even if it means having to use dark magic, which she finds that her sister was involved in. And she uses dark magic to actually summon Wrath, who is one of the princes of hell and shenanigans ensue. I was really intrigued by how the very first book, Kingdom of the Wicked, left off. And I'm interested to see how this continues. For Oz, the prompt is to read a book featuring transfiguration, shape-shifting, or a mythological creature. And for this, I think I'm going to give Cressley Cole a try. I've heard a lot about her Immortals After Dark series. And so I figure I will go ahead and read the very first book in that series. I would really like to find a paranormal romance series that I actually want to continue. But I find that none of them really hold my attention for very long because they're all kind of the same. They don't necessarily have the depth and the substance that I'm looking for. So I've actually given up on a lot of the paranormal romance series that I've started. They just weren't for me. And I've been actively seeking recommendations for strong paranormal romance that isn't like the Anita Blake series, which I've DNF, the Mercy Thompson series, which I've DNF, the Black Dagger Brotherhood, which I read the first book years ago and was like not impressed with at all. And so I just haven't found one that's for me. And I might never find one that's for me. But since I do have prompts in this readathon, as well as prompts and other reading challenges that would work well with the paranormal romance, I want to go ahead and give it a try. So I think I'm going to go ahead and start the Immortals After Dark series by Cressley Cole. I don't know anything about it except that it features vampires. So it's going to work out and that's what we're going to do. For Spike, the prompt is to read a hate to love trope. And for this, I believe I'm going to be reading The X Talk by Rachel Lynn Solomon. Rachel Lynn Solomon is an author that I want to read in 2023 to determine if I want to continue with her as an author. I've only ever read one book by her and it was her YA, which I remember really enjoying when I read it. But she has since released quite a few adult novels and I want to go ahead and read one to see if it's up my alley to see if I do want to continue with her as an author. And the X talk will satisfy this as well as some other reading challenge prompts. So I figured that this would be the perfect one to read. This follows Shay Goldstein, who has been a producer at her Seattle public radio station for nearly a decade, and she can't imagine working anywhere else. But lately, it's been a constant clash between her and her newest colleague, Dominic Yun, who's fresh off a journalism master's program and convinced he knows everything about public radio. When the struggling station needs a new concept, Shay proposes a show that her boss greenlights with excitement. On the X talk, two exes will deliver relationship advice live on air. Their boss decides Shay and Dominic are the perfect co hosts, given how much they already despise each other. Neither loves the idea of lying to their listeners, but it's this or unemployment. Their audience gets invested fast, and it's not long before the X talk becomes a must listen in Seattle and Klein's podcast charts. As the show gets bigger, so does their deception, especially when Shane and Dominic start to fall for each other. In an industry that values truth, getting caught could mean the end of more than just their careers. Okay, so not only is this hate to love, but it's also fake dating into something more. So I'm here for it. I'm absolutely really, really excited about this one, and I'm going to be reading it for the spike prompt. For Angel, the prompt is to read a book featuring kind of like that broody, tortured soul love interest. And for this, I think I'm going to go ahead and read Eleanor and Gray by Brittany C. Cherry. And the reason I chose this one is because one of the challenges features a prompt to read a book by an author with the same name as you. She doesn't quite spell her name the same, but it's the same name. It's going to work. This, from what I understand, is a second chance romance. And it seems like the main male character is definitely broody. It says, Grayson East left his mark on me. As the young girl who first fell for him, I didn't know much about life. I did know about his smile 
chills though and his laugh and the strange way my stomach flipped when he was near. Life was perfect until it wasn't and when we were forced to go our separate ways I held on to our memories, let go of my first crush and wished for the day I'd find him again. When my wish came true it was nothing like I imagined. I couldn't have known when I took the nanny position that it would be his children I looked after, that my new boss would be that boy I used to know, the boy who was now a man, a cold, lonely, detached man. When he realized who I was he made me promise to do my job and my job only. He made me promise not to try to get to know him, not to recall the memories I'd treasured all that time. But sometimes I saw the boy I'd once known in his stormy eyes. I saw the Grayson who smiled and laughed, who had stolen a young girl's heart, and there was no doubt in my mind that this boy was worth fighting for. Okay, definitely sounds swoony. It sounds like you're gonna have that broody, tortured soul, and you're gonna have the girl going in and saving him with love, and I'm here for it, and like I said, it satisfies some other challenges as well. So we're gonna go ahead and do that for the angel prompt. So for the prompt of Anya, I either have a choice to read a book that features vengeance or female rage, and surprisingly enough, I had a really difficult time finding a book for this because I have read all of the books with vengeance and female rage. Like I have read so many of the books that were recommended that features those plot lines and I was like okay apparently I have a taste but it made it a little bit hard to find a book just because I had already read so many of them. But there was one book on my TBR that did fit and it was called They Never Learned by Lane Fargo. This follows Scarlett Clark who is an exceptional English professor but she's even better at getting away with murder. Every year she searches for the worst man at Gorman University and plots his well-deserved demise. Thanks to her meticulous planning she's avoided drawing attention to herself but as she's preparing for her biggest kill yet the school starts probing into the growing body count on campus. Determined to keep her enemies close, Scarlet insinuates herself into the investigation and charms the woman in charge, Dr. Mina Pierce. Everything's going according to her master plan until she loses control with her latest victim, putting her secret life at risk of exposure. I'm not going to read any more than that. I don't need to know any more than that. We have a woman who is taking out evil men and I am here for it. Then for the prompt of faith to read a dark or taboo book, I think I'm gonna go ahead and read The Dark Corners of the Night by Meg Gardner. That is because that book is one of my 23 and 23. It's going to finish off a series by Meg Gardner that follows a main detective FBI agent person as she kind of hunts down serial killers. I really enjoyed the first book in that series called Unsub. I thought it was very well done, very well detailed. That book was based on the Zodiac Killer. The second book was based on Ted Bundy and even though Ted Bundy, you know, he's like pristine serial killer material, I didn't love that book as much but I definitely do want to continue in the series and finish it out since I only have one book left. But this is not cemented in stone because there are a lot of options definitely for like dark or taboo books. But The Dark Corners of the Night is one that's already on my TBR basically for this year and so it would be good to kind of get it out of the way. So we'll see. For Kendra the prompt is to read books with people of color. So it definitely needs that diverse representation and for this I'm going to be reading Kindred by Octavia Butler. This again will satisfy another challenge because one of the other challenges has a prompt to read an Octavia E. Butler book. I have never read anything by Octavia E. Butler, but I believe her books are science fiction. I think Kindred follows a woman who goes back in time. I'm getting a little bit of Outlander vibes there. So that is definitely the one that I'm going to read for Kendra. Next for Dawn is to read a book featuring a sibling relationship. And for this, I'm going to be reading actually a new release called Hello Beautiful by Anne Napolitano. That is actually expected to come to me in April. I have already have it on order. And so I figured it would be the perfect time to read it since I do want to try to read books as they come in to the best of my ability. And since it's already on order, I already have it on hold. And with my library, I figured it would be the perfect opportunity to go ahead and satisfy this prompt. This follows a particular family of Julia Padovano, a spirited and ambitious young woman who meets William Waters. And William Waters kind of grew up in a house that was silenced by tragedy where his parents could hardly bear to look at him, much less love him. So it is a relief when his skill on the basketball court earns him the scholarship to college far away from his childhood home. This is where he meets Julia and he's quickly welcomed into her family. She is inseparable from her three sisters, Sylvie, Cecilia, and Emmeline. And happily, the Padovanos fold Julia's new boyfriend into their loving chaotic household. By then darkness from William's past surfaces jeopardizing not only Julia's carefully orchestrated plans for their future but the sisters unshakable loyalty to one another. The result is a catastrophic family rift that changes their lives for generations. Will the loyalty that once rooted them be strong enough to draw them back together when it matters most? I don't know where I read this but I think this might have something to do with William kind of falling for one of the other sisters or at least emotionally cheating with one of the other sisters and I don't know if that's accurate or not. I thought that I read that somewhere so this is definitely going to be a very poignant beautiful story about sibling relationships. So I think that's going to fit the Dawn prompt really well. Then for Tara, the prompt is to read a book featuring LGBTQIA plus characters. And for this, I'm going to read another new release, one that was recently sent to me as part of the Aardvark book club box. It is For Her Consideration by Amy Spaulding. This 
is another one that I was kind of skeptical about, but I'm hoping that I love it. It is a sapphic romance, which again will satisfy another challenge that I have, which is to read a sapphic romance. So I feel like that's a perfect opportunity to go ahead and get both of these challenges satisfied. This follows our main character, Nina Rice, who has written romance friends for dreams of script writing for TV and even LA proper out of her life. Instead, she's safely out in the suburbs in her aunt's condo, working her talent agency job from home, managing celebrity email accounts, and certain that's plenty of writing and plot for her life. But a surprise meeting called by Ari Fox, a young actress on everyone's radar, stirs up all kinds of feelings. Nina thought she deleted for good. So this is following her relationship with Ari, who kind of convinces Nina that she needs to be out there writing and doing more with her life. And it sounds like it's going to be cute, sweet, heartwarming, and I'm willing to give it a chance. And it's going to satisfy the terror prompt perfectly. Then for Joyce, we need a book that features a strong mother figure. And I've struggled with this one as well. I think for this, I'm going to settle on All the Dangerous Things by Stacey Willingham. This again is another new release. It was sent to me, I believe in either December or January's book of the month box. I don't necessarily know how strong the mother figure is going to be, but it is all about a mother whose baby was taken from her, who was basically kidnapped from his crib and what she's doing to find her child while also kind of questioning herself and what she remembers from that night. And I believe there's going to be like a true crime podcast element. The mother is definitely hiding secrets. So the mother is absolutely a focus in this story. I don't necessarily know her strength as a mother. I don't know if she's going to be like an unreliable character. I'm not sure. That so far is what I've found to satisfy this prompt. I have open to feedback and recommendations for this one if you have any other suggestions for books featuring strong mother figures. Then for Robo Buffy, we have to read a sci-fi book. And for that, I'm definitely going to be reading The Martian by Andy Weir. Andy Weir is on the list of authors that I want to try for 2023. And I can't remember offhand, but he might be part of the 23 and 23 books that I put on there. I'm not sure. But this definitely satisfies multiple challenge prompts for me. And I'm absolutely going to read it. I've heard literally nothing but great things about this story. And I'm finally jumping on that bandwagon. It says six days ago, astronaut Mark Watney became one of the first people to walk on Mars. Now he's sure he'll be the first person to die there. After a dust storm nearly kills him and forces his crew to evacuate the planet while thinking him dead, Mark finds himself stranded on Mars's surface, completely alone with no way to signal Earth that he's alive. And even if he could get word out, his supplies would be gone years before a rescue could arrive. Chances are though, Mark won't have time to starve to death. The damaged machinery, unforgiving environment, or plain old human error are much more likely to kill him first. But Mark's not ready to quit. Armed with nothing but his ingenuity and his engineering skills and a gallows sense of humor that proves to be his greatest source of strength, he embarks on a dogged quest to stay alive, using his botany expertise to grow food and even hatch a mad plan to contact NSA back on Earth. As he overcomes one seemingly insurmountable obstacle after the next, Mark begins to let himself believe he might make it off the planet alive. So this is a sci-fi, it is a survival story, and it definitely kind of reminds me of like Castaway, but in space. So we're going to see what the hype is all about with this one, and I'm excited for it. Then for Clem, we have to read a book that has a strong focus on animals or that features an animal main character. This is another one that I'm kind of struggling to figure out what I want to read. This is another one that I'm open to suggestions for. I currently don't have anything set for this particular prompt. I'm going to keep working on it. So I'm open to any suggestions that you may have. Leave them down below for me. For Wesley, the prompt is to read a young adult novel. And I definitely have a lot of young adult novels on my 23 and 23 because a lot of them are going to be finishing out series that I've started years ago. But since in my April TBR, I did pull a challenge to read King of Crows by Libba Bray. I think I'm going to go ahead and use that to satisfy the prompt. King of Crows is the fourth and final book in the Diviner series by Libba Bray, which is a young adult paranormal series set in the 1920s. It follows a group of teenagers who have special abilities and their fight against this one ominous power. I'm still not entirely sure what the ominous power is and what the overall purpose of the power is and why he's like after these diviners, but we're going to see, we're going to get there. I have really enjoyed books two and three in that series. One was just kind of iffy, but I'm glad that I continued and I've really enjoyed the story so far. The audiobook narrator is fantastic and we're going to go ahead and finish out the series strong this year. For Riley, the prompt is to read the lowest rated book on your TBR or a book that you actually have low expectations for. And this isn't quite the lowest rated book on my TBR, but it is really close. The Cloisters by Katie Hayes. I'm actually surprised by how low of a rating this book has. I thought that it would be a lot stronger. This is giving me dark academia meets magic vibes. And so that's what really drew me to this story, but it is not getting great reviews. And so because of that, I'm kind of really, really concerned going in. But since I do already have it, I'm going to go ahead and give it a chance. And we're going to see if I like it. This follows our main character Anne Stilwell who is going to be working the summer at the Metropolitan Museum of Art but instead she finds herself assigned to the Cloisters, a gothic museum and garden renowned for its collection of medieval art and its enigmatic researchers. Eager to escape her troubled past in rural Washington, Anne is happy to indulge the researchers more outlandish theories only to find that their fascination with ancient divination runs deeper than academic obsession. They are determined to prove that medieval tarot holds the key to accurately telling the future. When Anne discovers a breakthrough in the form of a cryptic deck of 15th century tarot cards, she finds herself at the center of a 
dangerous game of power, seduction, and ambition. As their circle reaches its breaking point, Anne must decide if the tarot cards can teach her not only about the past, but also about her future. So like I said, kind of dark academia. There's magic, there's divination, there's all of the things in here, and it sounded really, really intriguing to me, but it's not getting great reviews. So currently, this is one of the lowest rated books on my TBR. I currently now don't have very high expectations for it, so we're going to go with this. For Robin, you either have to read a paranormal or a fantasy romance. And for this, I'm going to go ahead and continue in the Savage Land series by Stacey Marie Brown. I'm going to read book number three called Wildlands. This is a very addictive, fast-paced adult fantasy novel. It's definitely a little bit cheesy, a lot repetitive, but it's compulsively readable. It is bingeable. And at this point, I'm invested and I want to know what happens, especially after the cliffhanger of book two. And so I'm going to go ahead and continue with it and get another book knocked out of the way of the series. And then the final character prompt to satisfy would be Jenny. And that is to read a book featuring prominent themes of grief. And for that, I believe I'm going to read Key to My Heart by Leah Lewis. This follows a woman, I believe, who unexpectedly lost her husband. She had it all, a handsome new husband, a fixer up her cottage of her dreams, and the opportunity to tour with the musical she spent years writing. But when her husband suddenly dies, all her hopes and dreams instantly disappear. She has been heavily grieving for two and a half years. She just works, sleeps, and sees friends just often enough to allay their worries. So she's basically just existing. She's not really living at all. But her life is empty. She's lost motivation and bathed in love and happiness and everything. Thing. But when someone begins to leave mysterious messages for Natalie at the local train station's piano where she plays, she begins to feel a sense of hope and excitement for the first time since her husband's death. Before long, she finds herself on an unexpected journey towards newfound love for herself, for life, and maybe for a special someone. This just sounds so incredibly beautiful and heartbreaking, and I think it's going to explore grief very well, very beautifully. And so that is why I decided to choose this for that prompt. All right, getting into the big bad prompts. The first, of course, is our basic bitch vampire, and the prompt for that is to read a short or quick read. For this, I'm going to be reading a middle grade novel called Out of the Dust. There are a lot of reasons why I decided to choose this book for this prompt, because I know it's completely out of left field. It is 100% outside my comfort zone. Not only is it a middle grade, but it is entirely written in verse, and that's what definitely makes this a short and quick read, because it's 220 pages, I believe, but it's entirely written in free form verse. So not only will this satisfy a Slayer Fest prompt, it will also satisfy a challenge where I have to read a book of poetry, although I know this isn't like probably quite the poetry they are expecting, but it is considered poetry. And in turn, a separate challenge requires me to read a novel written in verse, which this is. And then yet a third challenge requires me to read a middle grade novel that won the Newbery Award. So all three of these prompts are definitely outside of my comfort zone. I don't like poetry whatsoever. I don't own any poetry. I have none on my TBR. I have no intentions of ever reading it. And so I knew it was going to be very, very far-fetched for me to satisfy those prompts. And then I also do not like middle grade. And when I found out that there was a middle grade completely written in verse that also won the Newbery, I was like, okay, I have to just get it out of the way. I have to suffer through it. I think the audiobook for this is only like two hours long. And so even if I listened to it on normal time speed, I would fly through it in a day. And so I'm going to use that to satisfy the prompt. This is set in the Dust Bowl era during the Great Depression, and it follows a 14-year-old girl and her experiences in it. And from what I hear, it's actually really hard hitting, as you might expect. And so I'm nervous about it, but I think I'm going to get through it okay. Then for Kathy, I have to read a book that's outside of my comfort zone. And then definitely Out of the Dust would 100% be a book that is outside of my comfort zone, but I can't like double up on big bad prompts. So I'm actually going to read a nonfiction. It is a nonfiction that also satisfies a challenge prompt to read a book that was written posthumously and it was actually one that was selected during my April TBR and that is When Breath Becomes Air. This is a story about a doctor. I believe he is actually a neurosurgeon. I think I said he might have been an oncologist in my TBR video but he is a neurosurgeon and he's very young at the time. Like he is 36. He is basically my age and he is diagnosed with cancer and this is his memoir about coming face to face with his own mortality as somebody who is used to being on the other side of that doctor-patient relationship and all of the things that he's learned. This is also not a very long story whatsoever, but I've heard that it is beautiful. And I had it on my TBR long before any of these challenges came out, just because I thought that it would be something that I could really appreciate. This also would deal heavily with themes of grief. I am not a nonfiction person, and I typically don't read memoirs unless I'm personally interested in the person that is writing the memoir. But I also do appreciate memoirs that I feel can teach me something and that could get me in my feels. And I think that that's what this one's going to do. And so I'm happy to have this satisfy the Kathy Newman prompt. All right, then for Veruca, we have to read a second chance romance. And for this, I am going to be doubling up and I'm going to be reading Eleanor and Gray to satisfy this prompt. So I will be doubling up Veruca with Angel for this readathon. And then we have Sweet and I'm actually going to be doubling up for his prompt as well. His prompt is to read either a novel that is written in verse or to read a
a book that features music heavily. And so for this, I'm going to be reading The Key to My Heart by Leah Lewis. So I'm going to be doubling up with Jenny because this one is definitely heavily featured around music. Our main character is a musician. She does play piano. So I'm going to double up on this one as well. Another one I think I'm going to be doubling up on is Zach Kralik. And that is to read either a mystery thriller that contains a serial killer or to read a true crime that focuses on a serial killer. And I have one of two options for this. I could either read The Five by Hallie Rubenfold, I believe is her name. This is a true crime about the victims of Jack the Ripper. I have it on my TBR. It is a book that I definitely want to read in 2023 because it's going to satisfy another challenge. But I also have The Dark Corners of the Night by Meg Gardner, which I'm using to satisfy the faith prompt of reading a dark or taboo book. And I can easily double up on those prompts. So I have not 100% decided on what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to have to kind of see how things are going, how I'm feeling. But I know that it's going to be very, very difficult for me to try to read 40 books even in three months. And so as much as I want to try to read 40 books, I do know that there's going to be at least a few times that I double up. And so this could easily be one of them. And then we have Dirk Kindestad. The prompt for this is to either read a middle grade or a book that features children heavily. And for this, I'm going to read Before We Were Yours by Lisa Wingate. Lisa Wingate is one of the authors that I want to read in 2023. This book will also satisfy another challenge prompt. And so I figured that it was perfect to go ahead and put on here, especially since children are the main focus of at least the past perspective. We have a past perspective set in 1939 in Memphis. 12 year old Real Faust and her four younger siblings live a magical life aboard the family's Mississippi River shanty boat. But when their father must rush their mother to the hospital one stormy night, Real is left in charge until strangers arrive in force. Wrenched from all that is familiar and thrown into a Tennessee children's home society orphanage, the Foss children are assured that they will soon be returned to their parents, but they quickly realize the dark truth. At the mercy of the facility's cruel director, Real fights to keep her sisters and brother together in a world of danger and uncertainty. Then, present day in Aiken, South Carolina, born into wealth and privilege, Avery Stafford seems to have it all, a successful career as a federal prosecutor, a handsome fiancé, and a lavish wedding on the horizon. But when Avery returns home to help her father weather a health crisis, a chance encounter leaves her with uncomfortable questions and compels her to take a journey through her family's long hidden history on a path that will ultimately lead to either devastation or redemption. Based on one of America's most notorious real life scandals in which Georgia Tan, director of a Memphis based adoption organization, kidnapped and sold poor children to wealthy families all over the country, Lisa Wingate's riveting, wrenching, and ultimately uplifting tale reminds us how, even though the paths we take can lead to many places, the heart never forgets where we belong. So this has got past and present and we have children in the past being kidnapped basically to be adopted to wealthy families. So I am very, very intrigued. This absolutely focuses heavily on children and I'm excited to finally be getting to this one. Then for Maggie Walsh, we have to read either a book that features a villainous perspective or a morally great character. And for this, I think I'm going to go ahead and give A Touch of Darkness a try by Scarlett St. Clair. I don't know much about this series. I just know that I've heard so many great things about it and it is supposedly a Hades and Persephone retelling. This is definitely a book that has already been on my TBR and this is finally giving me an excuse to read it. It doesn't really satisfy any other challenge prompts that I'm aware of, but I think I'm going to go ahead and use this to satisfy the Mackie prompt. Then we have The Judge, and the prompt for this is to read a dystopian or apocalyptic read. And for this, I'm actually going to read The Measure by Nikki Ehrlich. This is one that I've heard so much about, and Sarah from Sarah's Nightstand was actually the one that convinced me to add this to my TBR. So it's only been on my TBR for a handful of months, but since then, I've heard the most amazing things about it, and I love the concept of it. It sounds fantastic. It says, it seems like any other day. You wake up, pour a cup of coffee, and head out. But today, when you open your front door, waiting for you is a small wooden box. This box holds Holds your fate inside, the answer to the exact number of years you will live. From suburban doorstep to desert tents, every person on every continent receives the same box. In an instant, the world is thrust into a collective frenzy. Where do these boxes come from? What do they mean? Is there truth to what they promise? As society comes together and pulls apart, everyone faces the same shocking choice. Do they wish to know how long they'll live? And if so, what will they do with that knowledge? The measure charts the dawn of this new world through an unforgettable cast of characters whose decisions and fates interweave with one another, best friends whose dreams are forever entwined pen pals finding refuge in the unknown, a couple who thought they didn't have to rush, a doctor who cannot save himself, and a politician whose box becomes the powder keg that ultimately changes everything. That just sounds phenomenal. It is a concept that I've never heard of before and I'm very very excited. So that is what I'm going to be using to satisfy the judge prompt. Then for the prompt of the trio we have to read a book that features a found family or a strong friendship group. I believe for this I'm going to be reading The Raven King by Maggie Stiefvater. That would be the fourth and final book in the Raven Boys series. I feel like that's a very strong found family 
family strong friendship group and I need to go ahead and just finish the series because I have lost a lot of interest in finishing that series but I only have one book left so I just need to go ahead and get it out of the way and finish that series completely. Then for Mr. Trick we have to read a book that has unhauled potential and for this I'm actually going to be doubling up with Riley and reading The Cloisters so this is definitely a book that I have low expectations for. It is one of the lowest rated books on my TBR and therefore it definitely has strong unhauled potential and it could be unhauled after I finish the story so I will be doubling up for Trick as well. Then for The Gentleman. The Gentleman actually does not give you a specific prompt to satisfy. It just wants you to listen to the book of your choice via audio. So I could listen to literally any one of the character prompts on audio and be able to satisfy The Gentleman. I don't know if I'm going to do that, if I'm going to double up, or if I'm going to have something completely separate satisfy that prompt. I think it's going to depend on where I am at this point in the readathon. So I'm going to leave The Gentleman open at this time. Then we have Adam and the prompt for Adam is to read a horror novel. And for this, I'm going to be reading How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix. I do already have the book, but it is like under a stack of other books that I have to haul for you later this month. But I recently read The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires and I loved it so much. And I'm very excited to go ahead and get to this one. This follows our main character, Louise. And when she finds out her parents have died, she dreads going home. She doesn't want to leave her daughter with her ex and fly to Charleston. She doesn't want to deal with her family home, stuffed to the rafters with the remnants of her father's academic career and her mother's lifelong obsession with puppets and dolls. Okay, right there, creepy AF. She doesn't want to learn how to live without the two people who knew and loved her best in the world. Most of all, she doesn't want to deal with her brother, Mark, who never left their hometown, gets fired from one job after another, and resents her success. Unfortunately, she'll need his help to get the house ready for the sale because it'll take more than some new paint on the walls and clearing out a lifetime of memories to get this place on the market. But some houses don't want to be sold, and their home has other plans for both of them. So I'm here for it. I'm excited. I love Grady Hendrix's writing. He strikes a very good balance of humor and horror, and I'm very much looking forward to getting this one. All right, then we have The Master, and the prompt for him is to read a book with a royal name in the title, like King, Queen, Prince, things like that, or just a book featuring royalty. So I think I'm going to do The Royal Assassin to satisfy this. I will be buddy reading that with Sarah. We buddy read The Assassin's Apprentice, and then this is going to be book two in that series. And so I think that is what I'm going to use to satisfy that prompt. Or I could double up with this and Wesley. So I'm reading King of Crows to satisfy Wesley's prompt, and I could double up. Again, I haven't decided yet. There are a lot of options that I could choose from. But for right now, I do have the intention of reading a separate book, Royal Assassin, for that prompt. Then we have Darla, and the prompt for her is to read the first book in a series. As of right now, I have not selected a book for her because the options are wide. I could actually double up on this as well with the Oz prompt, which is to read a book featuring transfiguration shapeshifting. I'm going to be reading the first book in the Immortals After Dark series by Cressley Cole, so that technically would satisfy this. But as y'all know, I'm constantly starting series and just leaving them hanging. So I'm sure that there is a new series out there that I am desperate to start, but I just have not made a selection for that. I have a lot of time to make that determination because again, Darla is going to be a lot later on in the readathon as she is big bad number 14. So I have a lot of time to figure out what I'm going to do to satisfy that prompt. All right, for 15, we have Drusilla, and that is to read a book with red or black on the cover. So for that, I actually have The Chain by Adrienne McGinty. This is one that I've been really excited about for a long time because I think the concept of it is fantastic. It's about a person who kidnaps a child, and then he basically contacts the parent of the child, makes them do something, or else the child will die. And then that parent has to go kidnap the child that the kidnapper requests and involve the next parent. And that's what The Chain is. And that just sounds so intriguing and so dark to me. This has been on my radar for a really long time. I've heard great things about it and it's got red, it's got black, it's perfect. This is another tentative one for me, however, because I feel like there could be possibly other books that I need to satisfy challenges for that have red and black on the cover. For right now, we're going with the chain. Then for the mayor, we have to read a book featuring something that scares you. And for this, I had a really difficult time because I wasn't able to really think of like what scared me, like what would truly scare me. So this is another tentative one, but I think I'm going to go ahead and read Every Last Fear by Alex Finley. This is another one that satisfies a few other challenges. So it would be really good to get it out of the way. And this features a character whose entire family was massacred. And I think it's safe to say that a big fear of mine and possibly a lot of other people's is losing the people that we love. After a late night of partying, NYU student Matt Pine returns to his dorm room to devastating news. Nearly his entire family, his mom, his dad, his little brother and sister have been found dead from an apparent gas leak while vacationing in Mexico. The local police claim it was an accident, but the FBI and state department seem far less certain and they won't tell Matt why. The tragedy makes headlines everywhere because this isn't the first time the Pine family has been thrust into the media spotlight. Matt's older brother, Danny, currently serving a life sentence for the murder of his teenage girlfriend, Charlotte, was the subject of a viral true crime documentary suggesting that Danny was wrongfully convicted. Though the country has rallied behind Danny, Matt holds a secret about his brother that he's never told anyone. The night Charlotte was killed, Matt saw something that makes him believe his brother is actually guilty of the crime. When Matt returns to his small hometown to bury his parents and siblings, he's faced with a hostile community that was villainized by the documentary, a frenzied media and memories he'd hoped to leave behind forever. Now, as the deaths in Mexico appear increasingly suspicious, Matt must unearth the truth about his family's final days, putting his own life in peril. 
girl. Holy cow, this sounds fantastic. I don't know if I've ever actually read through the entirety of the synopsis of this before. He has just been on my radar because I've heard great things about him from Audrey from Chapter and Converse, and I absolutely want to give him a try. So I think I'm going to use this to satisfy the mayor. All right, for Glory, we have to read a book that is a five-star prediction. And for this, I'm going to be reading Running Wild by K.A. Tucker. Y'all know that The Simple Wild is basically my favorite romance series of all time. I have given the first two books in that series as well as the novella five stars. Those characters just have my whole heart and my whole soul. And Running Wild is the third full book in that series, but it actually follows a different main character than the first two. So we're going to probably be getting glimpses of Jonah and Kala in this, but it's going to be following Marie, who is a veterinarian and who was a prominent side character in the first two books because she is a longtime friend of Jonah's, but she also has feelings for Jonah. So I think you're going to find her, finally find her own love story, and I'm here for it. If any book has the potential to be a five stars, it is this one. Then for Caleb, we have to read a book that features a cult or a cultish plot. And for this, I think I'm going to actually be reading Educated by Tara Westover. This is definitely one that has been on my radar for a very long time. It's been on my TBR for a very long time. It's going to satisfy multiple other challenge prompts. And I've been really intrigued about this story. So if I remember correctly, from what I understand, she was born in Idaho to survivalists. She prepared for the end of the world by stockpiling home canned peaches and sleeping with her head for the hills bag. In the summer, she stewed herbs for her mother, a midwife and healer. And in the winter, she salvaged in her father's junkyard. Her father forbade hospitals, so Tara never saw a doctor or nurse. Gashes and concussions, even burns from explosions, were all treated at home with herbalism. The family was so isolated from mainstream society that there was no one to ensure the children received an education and no one to intervene when one of Tara's older brothers became violent. Then, lacking any formal education, Tara began to educate herself. She taught herself enough mathematics and grammar to be admitted to Brigham Young University, where she studied history, learning for the first time about important world events like the Holocaust and the Civil Rights Movement. Her quest for knowledge transformed her, taking her over oceans and across continents to Harvard and to Cambridge. Only then would she wonder if she traveled too far, if there was still a way home. Educated is an account of the struggle for self-invention. It is a tale of fierce family loyalty and of the grief that comes with severing the closest of ties. With the acute insight that distinguishes all great writers, Westover has crafted a universal coming-of-age story that gets to the heart of what an education is and what it offers. Perspective to see one's life through new eyes and the will to change it. So like I said, this has been on my radar for a very, very long time, so I'm going to use that to satisfy the Caleb prompt. All right, and then we have the first evil, and that is to read the oldest book on your TBR. So that is the book that you've had on your TBR for the longest, whether it's your virtual TBR or your physical TBR. And for that, I actually have a Colleen Hoover book called Confess. I have owned this book for so long, but this has actually been on my Goodreads TBR since 2017, and I just haven't read it yet. But I also haven't been in a hurry to read it because I love Colleen Hoover, and I don't necessarily feel the need to fly through her books. So I have just been getting to her books when I get to them, and it looks like now is when I'm going to get to Confess. I do not know what this is about. It says Auburn Reed has lost everything important to her. In her fight to rebuild her shattered life, she has her goals in sight, and there is no room for mistakes. But when she walks into a Dallas art studio in search of a job, she doesn't expect to find a deep attraction to the enigmatic artist who works there, Owen Gentry. For once, Auburn takes a chance and puts her heart in control, only to discover that Owen is keeping a major secret from coming out. The magnitude of his past threatens to destroy everything Auburn loves most, and the only way to get her life back on track is to cut Owen out of it. To save the relationship, all Owen needs to do is confess. But in this case, the confession could be much more destructive than the actual sin. As always, I'm here for it. I know that there's going to be a lot of angst, a lot of drama, and this is going to be read for the Slayer Fest readathon. And then the very final prompt to satisfy is the Hellmouth, and that is to read the biggest book on my TBR. And that is Way of Kings, folks, by Brandon Sanderson. Chonky Boy does not even begin to describe the length of this book. It is over a thousand pages. Why a book has to be a thousand pages, I don't know. I can only imagine how slow and tedious The Way of Kings is. So I'm going to give it a try. I'm not going to make any promises. If it doesn't work out, I believe the next longest book on my TBR is Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J. Mass at 800 pages, but I cannot read that yet because I have not yet read Tower of Dawn. So Tower of Dawn might be the book that I read just by default because I can't read anything else. So we're going to see. But I'm real nervous about it, y'all. Real nervous. All right, y'all, that is it. Those are all the books that I plan to read for the Slayer Fest TBR. That took me way longer to film than I thought it would, but I guess that's what happens when you're going into at least some little detail about 40 different books. Thank you so much for sticking with me. Please comment down below and let me know some of the books that you plan on using for the Slayer Fest readathon. Or if you didn't already know, I have created a Goodreads group specifically for this readathon. It is literally just called the Slayer Fest readathon. It is where you can go to interact with other people who are participating. We'll also have the ability to track your readathon progress in your own personal personal thread so you can go there. You can also go there to get recommendations if you want to. Just come and have a good time. I would love for y'all to participate. And of course, if you have any additional book recommendations for me for some of the prompts that I'm a little bit iffy on, please feel free to leave those down below as well or even in the group. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I post videos two times a week, sometimes three, if I have my shit together and there's a third video to film. And I would sure love to see you in one of those next videos. Bye guys.